Hello, I am Joel McLeod. I'm Erlen Tanner. And welcome to the Thursday 905 Roundup, where uh, this week we're focusing uh, most of our energies and probably all of our energies on the Wii GTHA Borough Hamlet small town hub of Burlington. Uh, mostly at, at City Council, because today, a, this week, a lot of drama, a lot of general WTA, WTF-ness was going on, where uh, ultimately a, a councillor was reprimanded and she has come out and said that she will not be running again uh, come this, this election, uh, municipal election uh, in the fall. Yeah. Roland, what's what? Give us the cold notes <laughs> version for anyone who, who's I'll try and give aware. the cold notes version, yeah. I mean, there's just there's a lot of information, and uh, I guess we are more than usually kind of aware of all the intimate details, having been kind of Burlington people ourselves and um, and the various players. Sometimes we have to rely on other people. Um, I think let's start off by saying that if that if um, Shauna Stolte isn't running it again uh, to be councillor, that in itself is a terrible outcome for this situation because uh, I don't think there's anybody who, who would claim that, that Sean Astolte isn't a, a, a perfectly good counsellor and somewhat, you know, maybe I need to put my cards on my table and say, you know, I not I got to know Sean Astolte during the last election when I was a candidate and we kind of hit it off. We, we liked each other. I think we, we kind of saw somewhat kindred spirits um, in the I mean, I shouldn't, I don't want to sound like I'm bragging because I've got no right to brag about anything, but uh, I felt that I saw someone who, who was in in politics for the right reasons because they want to do good things. And ultimately, that's the only reason that anybody should be doing it. It's not because you want to end up being prime minister or premier or whatever, or mayor or whatever. You want to do good things. Um, and um, uh, that always struck me as being the kind of person that Sean Stolte was. Now, she has been as of last night, voted, she was reprimanded as a result of an integrity commissioner report that found that um, on uh, on four complaints, she had crossed the line on 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 two items um, and had revealed information that she shouldn't have revealed. Uh, specifically, the address of a building in Roseland in Burlington, which is a very wealthy part of Burlington, where there was a uh, 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 someone was hoping to make a development and there was controversy over the development and um, uh, uh, oh, the, the the fact that there was a, a legal discussion and, and council business associated with that building was no secret to anybody, yet somehow revealing the address um, of it was contravening um, the confidentiality rules. I mean, I don't entirely get that. And even if I do get it, even if I accept, if I were to accept that there was some kind of contravention, then what the hell harm did it do? Who cares? Why the hell would he complain about that? Mm. And on the other issue, uh, she was reprimanded for um, mentioning a figure, um, which I believe was $50 million, um, in relation to the ultimate all-in costs of both purchasing and redeveloping and and doing everything associated with the uh, conversion of Bateman High School from its current state as a school uh, to a community centre. Now, that, so that price specifically did not refer to the price that was being paid for the school um, to uh, Halton District School Board. It related to the total all over cost. The, the, the number, just to clarify for our listeners, she said the not the actual number was north of fifty million dollars. She didn't actually no, say no, what true. the final yeah. agreed to sum was. She just said it was at one point there was talk of more than fifty million dollars, which is what she conveyed uh, publicly. So again, we we don't know the final agreed no, to really. sum for this mm -hmm. project. And we have no idea that, if that if, ultimately Burlington taxpayers. We are have no idea about the cost of the actual property, which is the bit that has to be confidential within that number. And, and I feel like the integrity commissioner is like, okay, you know, on some kind of technicality, sure, fine, whatever. Again, who cares? <laughs> That's not going to affect the purchase. Um, and I, I keep on referring back to. Uh, um, the purchase of the former General Brock High School in 2009. Uh, and if you go through uh, just the media reports, uh, 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 everything that is kind of easily publicly findable now, uh, over a decade later, uh, from that uh, debate, you'll find all over it 
the ballpark figure for how much it was going to cost to buy, even though that was a confidential number. So, like, there was no significant, you know, people, and there was a big public debate about that purchase, uh, as there should be, because it was like, well, you know, if we buy this land, uh, and I think at the time it was something like a uh, a five two vote. Um, uh, I know councillor, the, then councillor for Ward One, Rick Craven, voted against it because it was like, well, there's an impact for the city budget if we buy this property, and that's a perfectly mm-hmm. legitimate discussion to have, and it was held publicly, and then there was a, eventually a public vote. Uh, on purchasing. Now, this whole Bateman thing, which is ultimately what this entire stramash is ultimately all about Bateman and how that debate is not happening in public and how uh, important information is alleged to, that doesn't need to be confidential, is alleged by Councillor Stolte to be being withheld. Um, that, that, you know, we, we look at the, uh, at the most obvious example of the same thing happening, it was done in a much more open way. Well, there we go. She's got a point. Uh, well, that's a that's the thing is this this is a major uh, uh, investment of taxpayers' money to purchase it. Now the the thing and now people are th- might remember back in uh, the nineties that used to be oh school boards the city could buy the the land of a school board was putting it up for sale for a dollar um, or thereabouts. Uh, Mike Harris changed the rules uh, and. Now we're stuck having to pay for it at market value, which is going to be, quite frankly, yeah, it's going to be a lot more than fifty million dollars. Um, the 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 question is, and you're right, Roland. The argument about just why why we need to purchase this uh, has not been satisfied in my mind to the public inquiry. Like no nobody because everything is being done behind closed doors. Everything is being done in camera. Nobody, the mayor, uh, none of the councillors. Nobody has been forced to go to the public and sell the, the, the urgency to buy this land, uh, to buy this property. And then what are we going to do with it? Because the, the argument being made is like, oh, we're going to buy it. And Brock University is going to set up a campus for their uh, teacher's college at, at this location. To which my response is, well, then let Brock buy it. Let, let let Brock buy it, and or let let's go into a partnership with Brock, and we'll we'll rent space. From, if they well, say it, you buy it, we'll rent. Well, space there will be rent. Yeah, no, it will be a rental agreement. But I mean, the point is, why aren't why? Yeah, c- can they? Are they perhaps that's the deal? I mean, are are they paying for the redevelopment? We don't know. Um, uh, you know, I mean, w- right. what. In recent decades, when these kind of issues have come up, the public has generally supported the idea of the city purchasing because it's usually associated with a green space argument. It's like, you know, this is this is basically parkland. You know, school property tends to be right. double up as kind of parkland. And, and God knows we don't have very much of that. However, in this actual instance, what's being purchased is not the park. It's the school grounds, uh, the school building. A, a, a and a small a amount of, of of grounds, which includes a parking lot, and and you know if you know anything about city bylaws, you know that school parking lots don't need to be that big because children are, are the people who work there, not adults primarily. Uh, when well, if you know if it's going to be a, a city, um, if it's going to be a city uh, uh, community center plus a university plus a library. You know what? The first thing you need to have, unless they change the city bylaws, is a much bigger parking lot. Um, there goes any green space you're buying. Uh, so this ain't going to be a green space purchase. It's a property purchase. Uh, so this. Well, uh, here, here's the thing: if you if they're looking for a, a strictly community space, like a, a, like if they're thinking it was turning into a community center in the same ward, not more than a ten minute drive away, is Skyway Arena. Which, if anybody knows in the city, is desperately in need of a major overhaul. The question would be, why are we looking to spend money on that? Why not invest that money into a massive renovation of that, expand it? it right now, all Skyway Arena is is basically just a really old hockey rink that, quite frankly, does need a lot of upkeep. Why not invest in that? Really overhaul it. Not only redo the the hockey arena aspect of it, but add in more community space, uh, gymnasiums, uh, skate park, whatever the case may be, more park space, because you already have park space associated with it. Redo that. And it's in the middle of... It's something that this this council has been guilty of for a long time. And that is, it's been doing this stuff in secret. Now, some of it might be for 
valid reasons. Um, our Roland, you typed up a, an article kind of covering all this, and it's kicked off a bit of a, a hornet's nest amongst Burlingtonians who are following this story, and they're, they're following on Twitter. We had we have uh, Councillor Paul Sherman, who is the counselor of that of the area in question that we're talking about, coming in and chiming in, and he's you may may agree with him or not, but he, he is agreeing that this council has gone a lot into closed session meetings. Um, here's the thing. I, it, Maybe it's valid, maybe it's not, but I think you have to question the the reason why you need to go into closed sessions so much. And you forget one thing, you are a public body. You are paid for by us, the taxpayers. We deserve to know what it is you're talking about. There are reasons to go into closed session, but the frequency that you're using, it has to be raised and it has to be considered suspect, which is something I think coming back to Councillor Stolte, that's what she was bringing up is... The fact that we cut, that this council constantly goes into closed door sessions, that the public has no idea what the debates, what the arguments, what the, the things are going on behind these closed doors should be an alarm and should be something that peop, that shouldn't be so readily and eagerly embraced by the sitting council. Uh, yeah. And well, so there's two additional issues coming out that uh, to take them in reverse order of how they occurred in my head. Um, the first one is that no one disputes that some issues have to be according to the Municipal Act, uh, have to be done in closed session. If it's a matter, matter of, of uh, a, a legal issue, a legal dispute, if it's, uh, um, then it has to go into closed session. What is a dispute is, and I did a kind of comparison of, of how this was done four years ago and how it's done now. And, you know, hopefully if we get time, <laughs> if people want to, <laughs> again, make a case for donating to the 905 <laughs> We're amateurs. I have a full-time job. Um, uh, I'm still trying to catch up with watching the, the council session for yesterday. It's about three hours, just this dispute, uh, just this this one issue over Councillor Stolte. I've, I'm about an hour in at the moment. Um, we don't get paid anything. Um, if you want to contribute to the 905, we would find it easier to um, uh, make the case that we can spend time oh, yes. on this, you know, so, so seriously. I know, uh, and because we want to do the right amount of research to to be fair to everybody in, involved, you know, and and it's easy, you know. I had I apologized yesterday for shooting my mouth off, and I shouldn't have done because it was, it was personal and it wasn't based on facts. And what we do want always to be is based on facts, um, and, and that but that takes a lot more work <laughs> than being an opinionated jackass, you know. Um, but coming back to the point. Um, yeah, that 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 there are more closed session meetings, and a huge part of that comes out of the interim control bylaw that was uh, passed in 2018. Uh, and Councillor uh, um, uh, Sharman, it was undoubtedly making a point to those people who were not fans of the previous council um, and who uh, were unhappy with 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 downtown development. It's like, well, you wanted this bylaw. Look what has happened. Now you've got these closed session meetings. And there's a point to that. Uh, what there isn't a point to is the fact that, you know, today those items are going into the agenda as update on a confid confidential litigation matter. That's all you get. Boom, done. You've no idea which property, you've no idea uh, what's going on. You go back to 2018, you've got a you know, confidential letter from Joe Smith. Like they tell you it comes from Joe Smith. So we know Joe Smith sent a letter, doesn't say what the letter has in it, uh, but you know, and it says, uh, you know, confidential matter relating to blah, 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 um, Brant Street or whatever. I'm picking random, non, not real data. I'm just right. trying to illustrate. Right, 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 right. right. <laughs> so there's a big difference between update on a confidential matter and a confidential update on 24 Brant Street. Um, yeah, you know, there's a huge difference. I mean, in terms of, of our job of, of trying to be kind of responsible journalists, that means that we, we have an idea what's going on. The public has a sense of what's under discussion and, and and why it has to be confidential, and that, that's that's a big difference. But see, there's a there's a trend by going there's coming back to a trend here of just let's go into secrecy, let's do this in secret because it keep in mind like when things are done openly, you get some you know flack to it. And I'm gonna I'm going to bring up the the case of the infamous case of the the rainbow crosswalks that happened this past year. Um, for those of you who did not know, as you recall. We have covered this many, many times on this podcast. The Halton Catholic District School Board was originally not going to wave the pride flag. It caused a big kerfuffle amongst a variety of people across the city who wanted to show support. This city council decided that they were going to find money somehow to paint certain sidewalks 
uh, the colors of the pride flag, including uh, one location directly in front of the Catholic District School Board's offices, as well as the public school board's offices. Surprise, surprise, it passed uh, pretty much unanimously. Now, where the it gets tricky is the funding of that. How are they going to pay for this? And originally the plan was, okay, we're just going to pay for this to happen over the course of the next few years, and we'll just create a line item in the city budget just to pay this off each with each year's each year we add a new sidewalk to to it until the project's completed. That wasn't good enough. This council led by the mayor, the mayor's office, said, no, no, we're going to dip into city reserves and we're going to paint them all at once, to which uh, Councillor Stolte, Councillor Kearns, and Councillor Sherman were opposed to, but originally labeled in a public tweet, uh, Facebook post by the mayor as basically hinted at they were not LGBTQ Friendly. Yeah, and it was a hint, but it was a um, fairly obvious hint. And and the three councillors took it's it a it's a fairly it would, yeah. The three councillors were obviously they, they, they very the, were, enough, were very, and I think fairly uh, um, annoyed about that. It's like it's nothing were, to do with LGBT were, plus issues. It's about, right. about it's about public funding of of, of yeah. public funding. And that's that. The fact is, our our city reserves are depleted now to fund this. Now the trick is, if you drive over any of those sites that were approved, they look like shit. The, the the paint is chipping up. They are it's literally peeling away, and we haven't even got a full three hundred and sixty five days use out of them. They like it is a project that, quite frankly, we should be asking for our money back. It is just horrendous, what what it looks like. But this is dipped into our city reserve funds. These reserve funds are meant for emergencies, not for pet projects throughout the year. The talk is again coming back to Robert Bateman High that we might be going into reserve funds. To pay for oh, this. Oh, there's no question about whatever, that. Whatever. That, that. That is in the public record already that they are. We just don't right. know by how much. But we don't know. We don't know by how much. The fact that the city reserves are being talked about, we need to get it. That's a, again going into the city reserves to pay for this project is we need to know the what's the urgency for this, and are we exploring all possible options to obtain this property? Meaning, are we going to partnerships with Brock? Like, why isn't Brock purchasing it? And we'd say, well, we'll lease uh, surplus office space from you to uh, 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 to satisfy public city city of Burlington needs. Like, there are so many options here that we don't know what the we don't know what's going on here. Nobody's talking about it. To bring it back to again to Councillor Stolte, that's what she ultimately wanted to know: is that why are these debates not happening publicly, and shouldn't the public know at least what it is that we're going to talk about? Yeah, uh, um, my my fact, experience with. My experience with all councils and city halls, it's not, I'm not just talking about the politicians. I'm talking about the institution of municipal government. My experience, which is not vast, but is more than most people's, I guess, is that when you start criticizing the way they do things, the procedural aspects, like the way that almost the culture of, of the thing, the way we work, because and the people who are comfortable with the way things work and think it's fine. And they don't think, you know, they basically you're poking them and saying, we can do things better. And they're like, no, no, this is fine. Mm -hmm. Which is a very human reaction. But unfortunately, this is government and this is democracy. But when that happens, this is when they really lose their shit. And I think what we're seeing here is, is a classic case of municipalities, of a municipality losing its shit. Um, and and councillors who, mm -hmm. you know, Stand back from this whole thing. Is a review of um, closed meeting protocols a, a valid request for a councillor to make? Of course. Of course. I mean, it's the kind of thing that should happen all the time. I don't actually think any councillor would really dispute that. What they're disputing is the fact that Councillor Stolte brought it forward now, and they kept on harping about it. And they were just irritated. Councillor Sharman actually said in a, a committee meeting a few months ago, basically, I'm voting for this just to shut you know, just so we don't have to deal with it again, basically to shut Councillor Stolte mm -hmm. up. He didn't use those words. He did use the words, I'm sick of dealing with this, so let's do it. Councillor Stolte brought forward a motion, and basically Councillor Nissan and Sharman kind of, uh, uh, quite the word is, kind of gazumped it, suddenly became, you know, converts on the road to Damascus, took the motion away with, from her so that she can't have her name on it, uh, and, and passed it themselves. You know, it's like, well, now, the end result, great. Uh, that means that, the thing that Councillor Stolte was asking for all along, which is a review of the closed session uh, criteria, is going to happen. Um, so why do we have have to have all this baloney 
happen at the same time? Well, it's because of a sense of wounded pride and wounded self-regard, which, which, which I'm afraid politicians are very subject to, and which, which city halls are very subject to. You know, I mean, like again, my my limited experience, um, Burlington City Hall was, you know, going along as a volunteer to a committee, trying to do something, just trying to do something good, and you end. I ended up feeling after uh, about about a year, I can't remember how long it was now, eighteen months to a year. Um, you kind of felt that you know you're you're having been invited to to be a a, a, a volunteer on a volunteer unpaid thing that that you were considered with utter, utter contempt and dislike for having dared to suggest that a committee created to suggest improvements to a way something was done has suggested things that could maybe be done better. You know, the, the, the sort of feeling of, 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 uh, uh, of institutional outrage was so profound. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, it's like, God damn it, why the hell did I bother? You know, and you know, my decision at that point was I'm never bothering with anything like this again. And the tragedy is that Councillor Stolte has basically decided the, the same self same thing. It's like, what? I don't need to do this. I don't go and make a living doing other things. I don't need to deal with this toxic horse shit. Which it what, really, really is. What gets me about this, though, is like this isn't the first time we've seen this behind closed doors shenanigans. It, you know, uh, right next door, Hamilton City Council is notorious for just, you know, locking the doors and throwing away the key and chatting about all, all you like. There, it's clear to me that the, the problem is that, the, you know, the province needs to step in and amend. Uh, amend some municipality acts to to clarify when it is you are supposed to go into uh, closures. I know there's recommendations, but I think the the saying that you, this is it's not a recommendation anymore that you go into closed door sessions for certain events. I think it should be you might have to say like th these are the only times you're allowed to, and you must publicly state this is we are going into closed session to discuss. Um, you know the hi hiring or firing of high profile staff members or legal. Uh, to discuss with legal counsel options uh, presented to the municipality or uh, bargaining positions, et cetera. That kind of thing really, like we need to start laying this out in stone because the loosey goosey nature of this is showing that either, I, I don't, I'm not, I'm going to give people benefit of the doubt and say it's not for malicious reasons. It's not because they willfully, oh, let's be secret. It's because at the end of the day, this, you, you're talking with a group of people who do not have a legal framework in constitutional law or in in terms of provincial law governing this it's entirely well we you know we, we want to play it safe so let's go in behind closed doors yet that urgency to play it safe has sacrificed in my mind um and judging from our, our social media feed the trust of the public and that's the thing like you 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 are not a private corporation you're a public one you're you're a public entity that you are elected at the will of the people and you have to answer to us you have to let us in to say this is what we're talking about. This is what we want to do. And it's not enough to say at the, at the end, we'll, we'll present everything. This is what we've decided to do. And this is, this is what we're going to do. It's not enough. You got to have these, the, if you're going to have these debates, have them out in the public. And, and you know, I often return to the point of, you know, is something, you know, there's not only what is right and proper and what is legal. Those are two different things before you even get started. You know, what, what the law says and what is the right thing to do are often, not different things because obviously it has to be within the context of the law but they, they are slightly different perceptions of the world the law says x we say we've got to have x plus y you know um but the other thing is you know, two ca basically the whole of burlington council in effect uh, with the possible exception of uh um councillor um lisa kearns from war two although she voted in favor of the um uh the reprimand ultimately uh, kind of appear to or the public perception is certainly going to be that the council has ganged up on uh on shauna stolte mm -hmm. and i think that's a fair a fair interpretation because you know uh, what they've done i mean they're trying to defend their sense of kind of outraged how dare you criticize what we do right and this is again this this disease that public officials tend to develop but by doing that now they've created a huge uh, shitstorm let's just call it a shitstorm that's what it is they created a huge shitstorm where the, the, the people which admittedly are not nearly enough who pay attention to to um current affairs in burlington are pretty much unanimous in like this is ridiculous you know uh, they look foolish so from a purely political point of view it's a bad way to go about things um from a from the point of view of 
uh, having a council that can actually work together, this is not a smart way to go about things. The point of view of, of basically forcing out a good councillor, and I don't think anybody can claim that Sean Stolte isn't a fine councillor. I mean, by the standards of other people who have held that very same ward council in recent history, good God, you know, seriously, um, are we going to claim that this is the one who should be booted out of office? No. Uh, uh, you know, so we're going to lose a, a decent councillor because of this. Um, what has this achieved? I mean, it's just made the city look like idiots. I'm sorry, it has. Um, and it's, again, it's bad politics. The point of view of like, okay, they want to make a point to the councillor that she shouldn't have done something. Well, fine, there are a hundred thousand million ways of making that point. But the most sensible thing of all for, for them to do was to let it go because no one would have known it's not a big deal. Um, and they have a report coming through. It's already been agreed that, that, that uh, the... Um, uh, I don't know where the commissioner on closed session meetings or whatever the, the term is, is going to look at the whole thing and see if, if the rules are right. Um, you know, they could have ignored it and let the whole thing go until this report came back in July or June or wherever it's coming back. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and instead they decided to make a point. And I think, you know, uh, it's their right. I'm not saying that they don't have the right to do that, but I think it's entirely regrettable. Right, right, right. And ought to, are two different things. And this is quite frankly, it's, I, I, I don't see anyone in Burlington uh, who pays attention to the city council politics, jumping to defend uh, councillors uh, Nissan or, or Galbraith or the mayor uh, at the moment to, to say, Oh, well, it was completely justified. I, I think, I think the fact that, yeah, when you hold too many things in secret, here's the thing. It's from a practical standpoint, you can't explain, well, this is so important why we were in secret. Nobody knows. We we don't know. It's not it's not on the record. It's not you haven't seen we're going to discuss um or not. See now in my hypothetically what I would have said what would have been justified in my opinion, if they had a discussion over Robert Bateman High, what they're gonna do, discuss what, what it is that they want to do with it. These are this is the urgency. This is why we need it. We need it for this purpose, that purpose, that purpose. And if everyone says, Oh, that is good, okay, what are we willing to pay for it? Okay, that goes into closed door sessions. Yeah, exactly. You come out, you, you come out, you go and say, what, how much can we, are we willing to work with and what are we willing to do? And then you come out and say, we've come up with a, we've come up with a fund. It will be paid for throughout, you know, successive budgets. We'll just pay it off through successive budgets, but we've, we've come up with a, a bidding range and you go to town and you, you win or you lose. Um, you come out and you say, we've, we're going to pay it all for once. We've decided that we're going to use city reserve funds, which that should be an open council vote we should we should hear publicly what it is why why we need to go into reserve funds the urgent the constant going into do, into closed door sessions is quite frankly um it, it's what got them to this point and they, i think the the fact that you have the one counselor who was saying no guys let's 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 throw the let's crack the door open a bit let's let people in and see what it is that we're doing and get and let people know that sketchy stuff isn't happening here when you tell her no we got to shut you up real quick it doesn't instill a lot of confidence that the rest of them know what they're doing. It it, it doesn't reflect well on them. I mean, and, and, and you know, the integrity commission, the, the part of the debate I was watching, and as I say, I haven't watched the whole thing, part of the debate I was watching, you know, was about whether, whether Councillor Stolte admitted or not, had admitted in private with the integrity commissioner or not that she had crossed the line. Uh, and basically there were two points in, in the report, one of which said that she admitted that she might have because the rules are not clear. That basically, you know, where you draw the line on what needs to be confidential and what doesn't is a matter of debate. So inherently, there is a, a clear line. The integrity report, in, in effect, acknowledges that point. It's like, well, I think she crossed the line. Well, fine. She thinks she didn't. Who who knows better? You know, uh, the law doesn't make it clear. Um, now, you know, this is part of our legal system that our legislation is designed to be incredibly vague, actually, surprisingly enough. Um, that's how common law works. But, um, uh, you know, it, it, it's, it just didn't need to be done this way. Um, uh, there was absolutely no need and to, 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 but basically publicly humiliate a councillor for, for three hours. Uh, 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 the first hour that I've watched is basically every councillor in turn, 
trying to make a point by their question to the integrity commission, not not to ask a question uh, about the, the the report so much as could Councillor Stolte have done this? Could she have done this? Could she have done this? Basically to suggest, well, look, she's doing it wrong, so she deserves everything she gets. You know, uh, uh, you know, and, and some of these questions were were kind of ruled as being out of order by the mayor. Fair enough. Some so, uh, some of them, too many, it seems to me, were not. And again, it's like Councillor Kearns tried to say something, they got shut down, and then Councillor Nissan said something, which seemed entirely, you know, both seemed equally. <sighs> Kind of from the perspective of trying to ask a question which makes a point, which is, which is, you know, we have this this rule: councillors aren't allowed to make statements; they're only allowed to ask questions in these situations. So it's the question as a point uh, thing, which is which is another problem of just the way the whole municipal system works. It's infuriating. Mm. Um, but um, yeah, I mean, it was just it's like they all knew how they were going to vote at the start of the meeting why the hell did we have to have a three-hour meeting about it just do the bloody vote already you know uh it, it is well it's, it's that perform it's that performative justice right you know we need we need our pound of flesh well, while we're uh i really f- while we're while we're at it yeah. and it, and it, it's like it, part of me wonders if it's like just to send a message to the next upstart right the next the next person who says oh i, I want i have questions about the process and about the what we're getting at oh no we gotta remember this will Hang on. You're right. Three hours of this is uncalled for. Like it, and it, 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 the funny thing is, this wasn't behind closed doors. This had to be out in public, right? Oh, and, and I'm so sure that Councillor Stolte would have wanted it public as well. I mean, I know she did. I mean, it's I, I, I agree. But my my point my point being is like, oh no, we can't like the the the, the ultimately the stuff that she's you know. It, 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 well, there's a it's, there's it's a, a formative aspect to it that that that, that right. Yeah, it's like uh, do we you know? I mean, I I really feel that. Uh, every councillor should be asked at the start of any discussion. It's like, have you already decided how you're going to vote? Yes or no? And if the answer is yes, skip the debate. Just do the bloody vote. Right. But they don't. They have to have their say. And, and it's a fair point that, you know, if you're, if you're a councillor and you, your colleagues have all had a 10-minute disposition or whatever, and it's not 10 minutes, it's like a few minutes or whatever, then you're not going to be the councillor there who doesn't say anything because then it looks like you're not doing your job. So, I mean, you, you're you're th- there's almost a natural uh, encouragement to be as verbose as possible so it looks like you're a hard-working counselor or whatever but i mean if you ca- if you compare you know basically the the the, the commissioner yesterday was you know, raising the possibility that rather than five days loss of pay as as the punishment for what councillor stolte's done that they could go up to um, you know as high as uh, 30 days i think yeah it was 30 days uh, and that says uh, the maximum yep. amount any councillor can any be any, ever be docked is 90 days um and that you know so basically people who have been found to you know there's currently uh uh, uh councillor shirelli not bob shirelli a different shirelli in uh, ottawa who has uh, faced very serious allegations of impropriety um, that was what he got, uh, and you know the thing is, you can't actually ultimately fire a councillor. You know they are, they, are, they have to resign. That's the only way to get rid of a councillor. Um, uh, there, you know, I, I was just going through today. You know, other councillors who've who've been uh, reviewed. I mean, I mean, Councillor Whitehead in Hamilton is a great example. I think he did lose thirty days' pay after basically a decade or so of being week in, week out. A disruptive force on council of of indications of multiple you know multiple times of being uh, of bullying staff of making threats on social media, you know it just doesn't compare. uh, Well, it's not about it's not about comparing. It's the fact that again, I'm like, what what has been harmed to the city's reputation or bargaining position? We have no idea what money is going to be changing hands on on Robert Bateman High. Like we just don't know. We don't we don't know. Uh, how what what damage has been done to any position other than the fact that Councillor Stolte didn't follow to the letter, you know, absolute silence, you know, uh, uh, omerta level of uh, complicitness in, in keeping everything hush hush top secret. I really don't. Like, I'm, I'm saying, like, wh- how, how has she damaged any of the city of Burlington's bargaining position on yeah. anything? I mean, yeah, um, I mean, the, the, like, that, that's... like no, nobody's going to assume like fifty million dollars. If I'll be honest, if we got if we got a uh, Robert Bateman High for less than fifty million dollars, I'm like, yeah, okay, I'm on board with that. That's a that's a steal <laughs> in this market. That's a bargain. And I have no idea. I mean, so I mean, obviously we don't know. No, I mean, the, the, like, the, we don't. We the, don't know the, the one the one number that has so you know. 
Horton District School Board has to sell that property at market rates to whoever is willing to buy it. Yeah. So you know, it, it, in a in a uh, basically a public bidding war or whatever for for a property, the city can't talk about what number it's willing to go to because that would obviously. That, but, no, but the, that, here's that the, hasn't here's been nothing's that, compromised that, that, is, there. No, that, that's you know. nothing's compromised, and there's the. <sighs> I, I, I mean, the thing is, they need to come back to the basics. Why do we need it? Sell like they have. They just have not done the basic due diligence to the public to get the public on board with. We really need this, and everything's being done behind closed. They, I think they're assuming we'll bring it forward at some future point to the uh, to the public, and we'll all say, "Oh yeah, that's 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 perfectly fine." I um I disagree. I I, I want to know why do we need it. I want to know. Is this worth the uh, the effort to begin with? Because if it's not, I would have said, no, I don't care. I, I personally, I don't care if we keep it or not. I don't care if we use it or not. Um, sell it, but, but let the board, let the uh, school board get some money, put it back in the school system, and who who knows? Uh, um, I mean, you know, we should probably wrap it up soon. But there's one final thing that that, yeah. that needs to be considered in, in this context, and that is this year before the election. I would imagine the city is going to have to find a solution on LaSalle Park. Now, if you want to talk about a yeah. deeply loved and important piece of green space in Burlington, they don't come, you know, other than Spencer Smith, LaSalle Park is it. Um, mm -hmm. The city currently rents LaSalle from the city of Hamilton. It belongs to the city of Hamilton. Burlington basically rents it for a dollar a year. Um, and Hamilton isn't going to renew that lease, which was created in the 80s. They're going to be asking a lot more than a dollar a year. Or it's within the, the power of Hamilton to sell it to anybody else. Um, and there have been various motions made in Hamilton to that effect, basically saying to Burlington, you know, you need to start thinking about this. Well, if we've already run down reserves um, because of the desire to purchase Bateman, then are we going to have enough money in the reserves to to uh, to secure LaSalle? Who knows? These, again, are, are, are questions that are very legitimate questions to happen ahead of any council vote. <laughs> and that should be able to be happen it in, in in the public without you know regardless of any legal negotiations going on it should still be possible to, to discuss these things governments make decisions all the time that have confidential aspects to them that nevertheless you can still have a public debate about these issues now in effect councillor stolte has kind of made the the debate public and good for her for having done so uh, through this um because, you know, I, I don't think anybody else on council wanted it to be public because it's a lot easier to uh, present everybody with a, with a fait accompli and say, look, look what we've bought for you. Trinkets, toys, legacy projects. Right. Isn't it wonderful? Don't worry about how much it costs. It's all taken care of. You know, that, that, that's obviously that's the easier way to go, <laughs> but it's not the, it's not the well, proper way to go. Let's leave it at that for uh, for this week. Um Next week, hey, we're we're just on a completely different note. And a reminder: make sure that you subscribe so you don't miss out. We've got our episode with Stephen Del Duca, the Ontario Liberal Party leader, and we ask him what's he going to do for the nine hundred five. Um, yeah, don't miss that one. Interesting and interesting enough. Uh, did not mention the gun, uh, the gun gun control plan. He was, he's now promising. That's interesting. Um, but other than that, uh, stay stay tuned, subscribe, and uh, give us some money so we can. Uh, talk more about this stuff. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye. That's it for this episode of the 905er. Thank you for listening. As always, you can send us your feedback, thoughts, and concerns, or ideas for future episodes to our email, info at 905er.ca. We'd love to hear from you. You can help us keep the 905er going by financially supporting us through Patreon as well as PayPal. Visit us at 905er.ca and click on the support tab. As well, links are in the show notes for your convenience. Lastly, you can find us on social media. Search for the underscore 905er on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and LinkedIn. So long for now. See you next time.
you looking to make the most out of this life and optimize your personal wellness? Then check out the Natural Man podcast. Join me, host Mike C., as we explore all areas of human wellness, physical, mental, and emotional. Learn strategies to optimize your own well-being and be in the driver's seat of your own health. Remember, your doctor works for you. Learn biohacks, neurohacks, ways to improve sleep, and ways to optimize your body and your mind. Check us out on Apple, Spotify, the Fountain App, and at naturalmanpodcast.com.